Hello and welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we're taking a look at our first jump into resin on the channel. The Voxel Labs Proxima 6 inch. But first of all, roll those credits. Okay, so we, do, we normally do big stuff like Sauron or we normally do sort of big things like the, the Titan that we did or uh, something like something like this big guy here, this big X-Wing that we did. Really cool, big prints. And the reality is, is that FDM is still king in this area. Very, very difficult to beat FDM when it comes to quality versus price. Okay, so most of those large prints are printed on either a, uh, a longer LK4, which is about £130. Uh, it's got a 2, 230 by 230 build volume. Or some of the larger stuff is printed on a Sidewinder X1, about £350, and it's about 300 by 300 by 400 These are a new thing for us. So before we get started and we go through all the specifications of this machine, let's just take a quick look at some of those models. Okay, so let's start with the two models that I did on the Voxel Lab. So, um, so this one is, um, is the ornamental Pikachu. So let's just see if we can get that to go into focus. Hold on. Because the detail on this thing is pretty incredible. So I wanted to show you it raw before I prime it. Um, the only issue I had is the feet didn't come out and that slicer settings. It's nothing to do with the printer. So that's it raw. And this, this is it primed. So it's still a little wet because I've literally just done it for this video. But you can see the detail in that etching on the outside of the Pikachu. Now, it's just not possible to do that with FDM. Like, it's just not possible to do. So that is stunning. Pop that down there. And, all right. And then we have this guy. So this is a Scarab Warrior from, uh, from, a, from a Patreon. I want to say this one's Infinite Heroes. It was called Empires of Sand. And the detail in this, I'm just going to see. There we go. Look at that. Snapping into focus there. And my God, what a cool looking print. So this prints in four parts. It prints in the base. It prints in the legs. It prints with the top piece here and one of the arms, and then the other arm is separate. So, hold on, get you to, there we go. But that, I don't care what anybody says, you cannot achieve that with a 140 pound FDM printer. I mean, come on, just look at the, look at the wings. Just look at the detail in those clocks. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so let's get the obvious out of the way. These are damn near flawless. They are some of the best quality prints I've ever had. Um, I am terrified to paint this. That's how good I feel it is. This is, to me, a comparable level of quality that you would get if you went down to a games workshop or something like that to pick up a miniature for a tabletop game. I'm incredibly impressed with the Empires of Sand um, Patreon that I'm 99% sure it was Infinite Heroes. I'll put the link in the video description. Um, this was absolutely amazing, this one. The base actually comes off, which I've just shaken, so <laughs> that's why I just sort of looked a bit surprised. Um, and then we've got the Pikachu. This one is off of Thingiverse. I'll pop the link in the video description for this one as well. Let's talk about the machine. So 
Our first ever resin printers were the Anycubic Photons when they first came out. When they first, when they, when they first came out, if I remember rightly, they were about two hundred and fifty pounds. Um, the the build plate was not fun to level. Uh, quite a few of the early photons had bent Z rods that were causing a lot of issues. Um, I broke that photon oh eight times minimum before I just gave up trying to fix it. And we had a real issue where none of our none of our resin prints, which we were doing heads and hands sort of detail work, none of those would then fit with our FDM prints. This is because the resin we were using had a bit had quite a lot of warpage, um, and they were very early machines. We were, we were relatively early adopters, and we kind of just stepped away from it all. Enter Matt Farmer from Akuma Mods. I'll pop the link to his channel in the video description as well. And he, for the last few months, has been banging on us that we have to go back and we have to try resin again. Now I've seen the stuff on Facebook. I've seen the quality. Um, it always just felt like it wasn't right for our sort of applications, you know, big Saurons and, and, and big spaceships and large models. Um, but I'm starting to really see where this can start taking our models to the next level, where, where resin, as they're getting bigger, and they are getting bigger, you know, we've got things like the Frozone Mighty, that giant thing, or the, the Phenom thing, or the, you know, the... That they're getting large. Um, we actually went to uh, Photocentric. Have a look at that video. Um, they've got the Magna, huge build volume for a resin machine. Um, the build volume on this isn't huge. Okay, it's actually very comparable to um, to the original uh, Photon. So the build volume on this is one thirty by eighty two by one fifty five. Um, the price, however. Currently on Amazon, you can buy this machine for £140. Now that might seem like an awful lot of Games Workshop miniatures, until you consider that this little chap here probably cost me about £2 in resin, if that. More like £1.50. And I can print him as many times as I want. There's three or four poses on the Empire of Sands Patreon. Um, they've, you know, that th th you can make a whole tabletop game out of this guy, and it might take you a little bit of time, but you can make a whole tabletop gaming set with this. I'm very impressed with the upgrades that they've made. So they've 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 taken sort of the original format, and they have sort of they've they've put a bit more thought into it. This has a linear guide rail up the back. That's an MGN 15 sitting in there, not your normal MGN 12. Um, They've done a really easy leveling system. So the way that you level this machine is, oh, there we go. There are a couple of grub screws on the outside of this. You undo those, the ball joint then freely moves around. You're able to then lower the build plate to the, uh, to the screen, level it off perfectly to the screen. And then there's a guided uh, leveling system that, you work, that works directly through the screen, which to be fair, very similar to how the Photon works. Um, they've not reinvented the wheel. I'm not gonna pretend that they have. I like the VAT design. I like the fact the hood comes off and it makes it a little bit easier to get to. Um, I'm not gonna lie and say that this machine is now gonna replace a bunch of our FDM machines because it isn't, because the build volume on this is still a little bit small for us. Um, however, there is the Proxima 8.9 that you can have a look at, or is it the Proxima 9? Maybe it's the Proxima 9. It's a bigger screen, it's a bit more useful. Personally, my opinion would be to go for that. Pop a comment in the description if you'd like to see us um, reviewing the larger one to see how, to see how that one works. Um, it is a Chi2 box board. This is an all aluminium, all metal, nice and solid, nice and heavy. Um, I mean, there's really not that much to say. I don't feel like Voxel Labs, who, just so everybody's aware, are a sub-company of Flashforge. Um, I don't think there's, I don't think they're breaking the mold with this, okay? They're not, they're not resetting the world and reinventing the way that we do resin printing. But what they have done is they have taken, they have refined what originally was out with the, uh, with the original 
photons that were around. So they've gone for that linear rail. They've got an optical end stop. They've got a 2K monochrome screen in here. So the 2K monochrome screen will last longer, give you finer quality prints, and it prints faster as well because it doesn't need as much curing time. Um, I'd be lying if I said the resin that I used didn't stink a bit. This is literally, oh, it's Eligoo. This is Eligoo resin. Um, it's called Standard Photopolymer Resin. You know, they really went all out on the name. Um, if I'm honest, the smell bothers me. There's no filtration on this machine, um, and, and that is relatively evident. So we are going to have to come up with some sort of storage system here in the studio where we can have these machines because I, my office is just too small. I'll notice the smell and it'll start to bother me. Um, one thing I will say is abuse your, amuse yourself of the idea that you are going to be able to keep this plastic thing clean. Because honestly, I've done like eight prints on this and it is sticky as hell. When you actually put it on, it almost forms a little seal at the bottom. I'm, I'm assuming at some point I've knocked a little bit of resin out of the vat or something. And now, it now it's now sticky. And I've read pretty reliably online that if you try and clean this with isopropyl alcohol, um, it reacts with, the, um, with, with this particular plastic and, um, and, it, and, it, and it ruins the plastic. So you can't be doing that. Um, let's just, I mean, I still can't get over the actual quality and the detail in these prints. Again, I don't necessarily think that Voxel Labs are doing anything fantastically new, but what they've done is they've taken what was working and they have refined it. So you've got that linear rail, you've got that 2K monochrome screen, you've got an established Chi2 box board. Um, I'm not going to get into the whole Chi2 box thing where, um, where I know that a lot of people have issues with the way that Chi2 box have dealt with their slicers and things like that. Everything that I sliced with this was sliced on their free slicer, not on their pro version. As you can see, I had a couple of issues with Pikachu's feet, um, but outside of that, everything else was just automatic supports. Um, this model, um, interestingly enough, was actually pre-supported. So I didn't have to do any of the supports for this at all. And pre-supported, I didn't have to do anything. In the slicer, slice it out, put it in the printer, off it went, printed perfectly. I did hollow this out because it wasn't hollowed, but outside of that, didn't do anything. Um, I hollowed out the Pikachu as well, so it's only about one mil thick. Um, so I used as little resin as possible, and then I put some drain holes underneath to stop that from blowing up. Um, a cautionary tale for anybody who thinks that they should be using water washable resin. Myself and Matt Farmer are on something of a crusade around this. Um, I've been I've been following resin printing for a while, and I've seen the issues with um, with with water washable resin. So the first is longevity. I'm seeing a lot of people who are having issues where they are printing their models, painting them, and everything else. They get halfway through painting, and their models actually crack as they continue to cure. Um, that's models that are painted, models that are primed. They don't have any exposure to UV light, but they still crack. Um, and the second issue, and the most important one, from my perspective, is that it is not... So just because it's water washable resin, it is still horrendously toxic. It's still horrendously toxic. The insinuation with water washable resin is that it's somehow safer, or that you don't need gloves and goggles to handle it, and indeed that you can pour it directly down your sink. You can't. You have to treat this stuff with a level of respect. This is why I still struggle to recommend resin 3D printing to new people. Because this isn't like playing with an FDM machine, right? Okay, you can burn yourself and there's sort of general electrical hazards and things like that with using a, an FDM 3D printer. But you're not going to poison yourself. Not really. Even if you're printing ABS in the same room as you without any ventilation, you're just going to get a headache for the most part. It's toxic and you shouldn't do it, but it's not going to hurt you. 
Um, but Matt Farmer on one of his streams, someone who's incredibly experienced with resin, has already had more than one or two close calls where he has been moving something to somewhere else, he dropped it, the isopropyl alcohol that he had splashed him in the face, directly in his eyes, and that had microplastic and it had partly cured resin in the, um, in the IPA. He had to go to hospital, he's fine, Check out his channel, it's down below. He's still alive, he can still see. But there are plenty of people who develop very severe allergies to these and they get chemical burns up their arms. You've probably seen those in some of the groups. The resin needs to be handled with respect. It needs to be treated accordingly. It's a dangerous chemical, it is super poisonous, and it stings when it gets in your eyes. It stays on your hands if you touch it for hours to no matter how many times you wash your hands I, I i just want people to be clear if they're going into resin printing please 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 remember to be careful wear your safety goggles wear your gloves make sure that you're curing everything properly make sure you're storing your chemicals properly because there's nothing worse than coming home to find out that your child has drunk some of this because he thought it was cherry aid so you have to treat this stuff with a level of respect. That being said, with this machine, I, I, can't, I can't fault it. For the price that you pay and the quality of prints that you get, I, I don't think there's a better entry-level 3D printer on the market today. I, I, I don't think there is a better entry-level resin 3D printer on the market today. Um, the price is phenomenal for what you're getting. Um, you're getting that 2K long life screen because it's monochrome. It's gonna get, get you get it out of the box. If you check out our video below of, um, of the unboxing, you'll see how quickly we went from out the box, resin in, level the build plate. Wait, switch reverse that. Level the build plate, resin in. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we were printing inside of 20 minutes and 10 minutes of that was me trying to get the thing out of the box they have done a genuinely really good job with this i'm hoping that we're going to see some more things from voxel labs they are they are really opening up as a challenger in the resin market i've got to say i really like the machine i can't really fault any of the design points um you know uh, does exactly what it says on the tin um everything on it works there's a Chi2 box profile that you can use as standard. That's what I'm using. That's what printed these. They came out really, really nice. What else can you say? Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. And we will catch you on the next video. See you soon.